On this episode of What's Going On With Chipping, Christmas is around the corner, Black Friday is around the corner, but even before we get to them, there's one other holiday we need to prepare for, and that in the United States is Halloween. And a latest story out of American Shipper tells us we may want to be a little bit afraid of what's going to happen this Halloween, and I'm not talking about Michael Myers. Hi, I'm your host, Sal Mercagliano, former Merchant Mariner, chair of the Department of History, Criminal Justice, and Political Science at Campbell University, and an adjunct professor of maritime industry policy at the U.S. Merchant Marine Academy. So on this episode of What's Going On With Shipping, we're going to look at a story that was an American shipper by Lorianne Larocco. Uh, those of you who don't know Lorianne, uh, she is a CNBC reporter, really is a, a, a expert in the field of maritime logistics and trade, writes about it quite a bit, author's books, uh, absolutely just rock star level kind of person when it comes to this type of reporting. And she put this great story together that I love. And I want to break it down a little bit because it has such great implications for trade, but also it, it allows us to understand trade in a much easier way. So I'm happy to promote Lorianne Larocco here on this. So what she has in this story here is, is a most ghoulish story, uh, Halloween supply chain nightmares. And so what she's basically doing, and, and she works in conjunction with several other groups here, I'll just have to wear my glasses for part of this. Uh, she's talking about the uh, Spencer Gifts and their pop-up store, which is uh, their spirit Halloween store. These are those little pop-up stores you see everywhere with costumes and all the, all the great stuff you want for Halloween. Got a 13-year-old son, so I know all about this stuff. And they looked at the historic shipping of goods for them. And this chart shows it, shows you the amount of containers, TEUs on the left, and uh, basically months on the bottom, 2017, 2018, 19, 20, and 21, and when their gifts arise. And you'll see here in 2017, the really big peak here was in June and down in July and, and kind of decreases by August. And you see those here year after year. And you can see really by the time you get in August, you're on that downward peak, you're on that downward peak. Last year, a bit different with June and July really being the surge. But right now, what we're seeing is August being higher than the June month. And one of the things that that's maybe indicating is that cargo is not flowing as quickly as possible. And to do that, uh, American Shipper worked with two groups. They worked with Marine Traffic, my favorite, who has the AIS app I use all the time, and Import Genius. And they followed four voyages of ships uh, from the port of Yanatan to the U.S. Uh, two of the vessels came to Los Angeles, Long Beach. The other two are heading uh, for Savannah, Georgia. and. Of course, we know that the ports of Ningbao and Yanatan have been the most impacted by COVID. We had the Yanatan shut down this summer. We just had Ningbo shut down not too long ago. And if you look at the percentage here, they show you, <coughs> excuse me, by foreign ports where Spencer's getting their gifts or gifts, getting their uh, containers from in 2021, Ningbao almost 50%, 48.6% come out of Ningbao and then Yanatan with about a third of the containers coming out. The rest is split in Shanghai through all the other ports. So obviously shutdowns in Ningbao and Yanatan will have some impacts. And what they do here is a great story. They, they follow the voyages of several ships. Now, before we jump into this, let's, let's look back here. We know, for example, that Los Angeles is having huge shutdowns. Here's the story from G Captain, uh, which was a Lodestar story back in August. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, early morning here for me. Uh, where they're talking about the issues of getting containers into the port, moving the port, uh, moving the containers. Uh, really good story in here, looking at the exact levels, uh, issues with getting American exports out right here. There's a whole story here uh, that you can link over to this story right here up from Gene Soroka who does his reports on the Port of Los Angeles. He's the executive director of the Port of Los Angeles. And one of the things that he reported on, the fact that the biggest export coming out of Los Angeles right now is air, empty containers uh, coming out. Uh, Long Beach just completed a huge advancement of their port, uh, really been working on it for 10 years now. So the Port of Long Beach is, is much more better capable to handle containers, but we're still seeing massive lines off the coast. Uh, biggest lines we've ever seen waiting to get into the port. At the same time, this report came out on the fourth largest container port in the United States, the port of Savannah, which has its biggest backlog right now. 23 ships as of Tuesday 
waiting off by percentages, this puts Savannah as the worst port for operating. Uh, Savannah's at 82% congestion rate. Seattle's at 65, Los Angeles at 54, even though Los Angeles has the most ships. Los Angeles also operates the most ships. They also work the most ships. So this is obviously having an impact. So U.S. ports, and this goes worldwide. You can do Felixstowe, you can do Rotterdam, you can do uh, 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 Algeciras, you name it. Ports around the world are having this same issue accompanying that. Go back to the story right here. Uh, they followed the CMA, CGM, Americo Vespucci, arrived in the port of Yanitan on May 10th. 64 containers were loaded on May 12th. The port of uh, the ship departed for Long Beach. Two days, about typical, come in on the 10th, load on the 11th, leave on the 12th, finish up. You, you, you've, got, you've got the stowage you have to do usually. Uh, it arrived at the anchorage on May 30th. Anchor June 4th, it headed directly to berth and docked for eight days before departing on June 12th. Eight days. That's a long time for container ships to be in port. Los Angeles is unique for a variety of reasons. Most container ports do not have ships in them that long. Los Angeles, Long Beach do for a very good reason. Most ships come into Los Angeles, Long Beach and offload the vast majority of their cargo. Lots of container ships, for example, on the East Coast, will hit an East Coast port and go up and down the East Coast offloading containers. On the West Coast, because there's only LA, Long Beach, Oakland, Seattle, they tend to come in and that's about it. So they come into that one port and it takes them a lot longer to offload. Plus, the port of Los Angeles, Long Beach is constrained right now. They're working two ships, not three. They can't work anymore because they can't get the containers off the terminals. So they were on berth there for an exceptional long period of time, eight days uh, and before they sailed, destined for uh, a Sing Tao. Uh, total transit time was 34 days. 14 of those days were spent in the port of Long Beach. Understand, ships do not make money in port. They want to be constantly moving. It's like a chess game. You want to keep your ships moving. And as it says here, time is the most valuable commodity for an importer. The juggernaut of congestion in the U.S. port, once a vessel is delayed because of congestion, it throws off the entire global schedule for the vessel. And, and it does. Uh, ships are kind of like you know airlines. They, they have to fly on, on set schedules. And there's not extra airliners to, to fill in. There's not extra ships to fill in. Fast forward to July. And the second example was the CMA CGM Chile. Arrived at Yanitan July 16th, even though it was, it was months after the May closure, the damage was done. Congestion plagued the port. Chile loaded 98 TEUs filled with items such as the inflatable dragon costume. We may have a critical shortage of dragon costumes in the United States. I don't know how much more serious this can get people. I mean, if we're without dragon costumes, how are we supposed to live in our lifestyle that we've come accustomed to in the United States? I I of course, being completely facetious here, but but this is a good example. I mean, it's just a great example of, of what's going on here. Uh, this voyage had the most to use track during the timeline, black lights, tombstones, skeleton fences, and low, <laughs> low-lying coffin fog machines. So again, vital commodities coming across here. Uh, we're talking, oh, we're talking about 3,274 units of animatronics on the boat. We, I, I, I keep going back to the two dinosaurs that were on every given. I had to go to the golf course. Uh, Chile departed on July 17th, reached Long Beach and anchored on August 3rd, nine days later, nine days sitting out at the anchorage. She came in on August uh, uh, 21st and came in. So nine days waiting, came in, left on the 21st for its next destination, which is Yanitan with an ETA of September 5th. Total transit time, 37 days, port to port. And so you, you had a little bit of a difference there, just about three days. And it may not, as, as Lorianne says here, it may not seem like a lot, but I have to tell you, schedules are down to the minute, down to the hours for the arrival of vessels on berth, loading. You have to think about this. You have to arrange uh, container space, cranes. Uh, there's got to be uh, trucks and trains available. Any little throw off of the system creates a logistics backlog. So the story goes on here. It talks about the fact that, you know, just the, the delays from the ports in China are one thing. And remember, China's doing a very aggressive job to keep the spread of COVID from happening. When they have an exposure, they shut everything down. Everyone who's associated with it, they don't just contact trace. They shut everything down, go into a two-week lockdown, and then reopen because by that point, it should have run its course. Anyone who has it has it. Anyone who doesn't have it does not have it. And they can basically resume. 
The problem back in the United States is our supply chain is just not handling it. Road, rail, you name it, all the logistics associated with it are having a hard time moving it. And you can see that here in this index, the inbound ocean TEU volume index. And again, this is a measure of volume, you know, over what was the norm uh, back in, in, in early part of the year that were basically over that baseline. The baseline of 100 was back on January 1st. And we're right now hitting between 250 and 300. So you're talking about a two and a half uh, to uh, uh, two and three quarter time increase in that. And that's obviously having the massive impact. If you look at the East Coast, ships going to the East Coast, we see this happening. So on May 8th, the Costco shipping Camellia arrived in the port of Yanatan, loaded 56 containers. This is just the containers, obviously, for this company. They, they loaded thousands of containers and departed for Savannah on May 9th. She also mentioned that the Panama Canal is undergoing a scheduled repair right now, and that has slowed down ships coming through the Panama Canal. And you can sit there and say, well, they should defer it, but they can't. They have to do these scheduled repairs. And that shuts down lanes of the canal temporarily, and they're undergoing that for the past month. Uh, left Shanghai, traveled through the Panama Canal, and uh, went to New York, arrived in Savannah on June 19th. So again, a month it took for them to make that voyage. It was anchored until June 24th, docked early in the morning, on berth for two days, total transit time, 43 days. Again, two days, they can do shorter port stays on the East Coast because, again, they're running down the coast. They're not in violation of the Jones Act because they're not picking up cargo and moving it. They're just dropping off. And then the last example, the uh, Yang Min With carried 10 TUs from Yanatan to Savannah, Followed the same time, left for Vietnam, Singapore, traveled through the Suez Canal without delay. So she didn't go through Panama. She went the other way, uh, made stops at the port of New York, Norfolk, before arriving at Savannah on August 9th. So, again, uh, departed June 25th, so about five weeks, uh, docked on August 14th, departed two days later, 55 days, almost two months to do this. And what we're seeing here, again, is, is issues in delay. Uh, the quote here, while Spencer's is massively reliant on Los Angeles, you can see the TU shift to Savannah away from Long Beach. This, of course, has added to overwhelming volume in August, contributing to port delays. They, you have to make a, a choice here. Believe it or not, from Shanghai to the United States, you can basically, especially the East Coast, it's about 50-50 whether to go through the Panama Canal or the Suez Canal. And the reason right now that they're, they're making these shifts is the East Coast ports seem to be a little bit easy, open when L.A. Long Beach was shut back in May and, and, and or, or, or slowed down in April and May. But now that report we had here on, on Savannah right here on G Captain tells us, no, Savannah is actually the most congested port in terms of, of slowdowns. So finish up the story here, kind of go up here uh, into the last aspect here that we see here. So in Savannah, we saw by week 28, there was an increase of anchorage time from almost nothing to 1.1 days. It increased in week 29 to 4.4. And then we saw week 30, we saw 3.5. We see what it is now and how it's increased. We see this Spencer Gibbs import volume show that they're preparing for an enormous Halloween season. August import volume was nearly the size of their 2017 season high. But with heavy reliance on LA Long Beach and delays continuing to mount, Spencer's may be hard pressed to keep shelves and online supplies stocked as we enter peak Halloween season. We're, clo we're working closely with supply chain partners and our logistics and operations teams across the country to explore every available option in order to expedite and provide our fans a full range of Halloween items they come to expect at no additional cost to customers. So, what does this all mean? Uh, this is a great little example, what, what we sometimes refer to as microeconomic example of a macroeconomic issue. Let's look at a specific company, look at four ships carrying cargo and use that to explain the larger issue that's going on. I think Lorianne Larco does a great job of this story. You, you really see this play out. Does this answer all the questions? No, by not any means. Uh, what does it mean for you? Uh, I'll tell you right now, and I've said this before. I said in May, do your Christmas shopping now. Uh, if you need your hot, uh, costume for Halloween, don't wait for the last minute because the shelves are going to be bare or the choices you have will be limited. Uh, what choice does Spencer's have? If they don't want to make costumes more expensive or goods more expensive by air freighting it, which they're going to have a hard time to do anyway because air freight is at a premium right now 
uh, they're going to have to rely on what they have. And uh, maybe a lot of homemade costumes uh, this Halloween uh, running around. And uh, my favorite homemade co- uh, costume, by the way, uh, saw it on an image on Twitter, was a guy dressed as the Ever Given. The container ship looked great. Uh, it was homemade, looked good. Uh, I, I like that. Go go for your shipping Halloween costume this year. I think it'll be great. Just watch yourself walking around. You tend to get stuck in places. Sorry, bad joke. But here's a great story talking about the supply chain and the issues associated with the supply chain with data from the ports in LA, Long Beach, and in Savannah. Uh, this is going to get magnified. Magnify this a thousand, 10,000, however, how many times you think it has to be magnified for the situation that happens on Black Friday, the day after Thanksgiving in the United States, and the Christmas season that begins really uh, from the end of November to December. Uh, we will see shortages on the shelves of goods because they're not going to be able to get there quick enough. It's going to be hard pressed for everything to move as quickly as you can. You see the delays in loading ports and in discharge ports. And even if you get the container off the boat in LA Long Beach or in Savannah, you have to get that container to the designated store outlet repack, whatever you have to do to get that material there. It's going to take longer. And that's because our system is is pressed. It, it's very difficult right now. There's a shortage of containers. There's a shortage of container ships. Infrastructure is at a premium. People have more money because of COVID. They're not spending as much. They, they're they getting checks from the, from the government. And we see this splurge here. Uh, we're seeing inflation creep up. That may ha- slow things down a little bit, but it hasn't yet. And every estimate I've seen is talking about this continuing on into 2022, 2023, conceivably. I, I don't know about 2023. I think that's, that's way, way out there to look at. But definitely in the 2022, this is not going to be a backlog that's cleared very easily. So on that little tidbit of Halloween news, uh, I, ho- I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, hopefully I have not scared you. I didn't put on a face mask and do my Michael Myers impersonation. Uh, I, I could have, but I didn't. But... Hopefully you're aware now a little bit more of the situation facing us as we get ready to deal with this looming shortages due to shipping. So for this episode of What's Going On With Shipping, I was your host, Sal McConnell. Hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos when they come out. Give it a thumbs up, share it across uh, social media. Uh, Again, scare your friends for Halloween. Just let them know that they may not have that costume that they wanted. Again, we we could see a critical shortage of fog machines, which I think could could conceivably lead to the fall of the United States. But maybe not. Maybe we'll, we'll be able to persevere and get by. Until our next episode, this is Sal signing off.